top 10 players who need to have one more competitive run. Retirement always comes to any athletes in any sports we know, including esports. No matter how good one is, age and certain factors catch up to him which causes him to lose some skills. It may be carpal tunnel syndrome, slowed reaction time, or they just don't want to play anymore and watch the spectacle as a fan or work behind the scenes. But there are some players who we just simply can't get enough of that makes us want to say, man, this guy can do one more push. Players who we thought hanged their jerseys too early. Before we continue, be sure to hit that subscribe button and let's see if we can hit 100 likes on this video. Here are our top 10 players who need to have one more competitive run. In this list, we included players who are already retired or inactive and not yet clear whether to come back to the pro scene or not. Let's begin. Number 10. Ivan Artstyle Antonov Artstyle was the captain of the 2011 Navi squad that breezed through the international 2011. He started playing as a position 1 carry but then shifted later in his career to the position 4 support. He then left Navi after winning the international and joined Team Darer. It is with this team that he attended the international 2012 but sadly finished last on the tournament. After several bad finishes in the tournament, he returned to Navi in 2015 but left the team shortly after. He is one of the few people who placed a semi-carry kind of support and is efficient in doing so. This unorthodox kind of playstyle was criticized by the many together with his ability as a captain. Though one play proved the doubters wrong with Artstyle getting a rampage with a position 4 enchantress against Team Secret at Dota Pit Season 4. He is currently coaching Virtus Pro. Navi fans would definitely love to see him play again in the pro scene. Number 9. Zhang YYF Chen Talking about loyalty, YYF played his whole career with Invictus Gaming. Together with Xuan, Faith, Ferrari430, and Zhou, they dominated the International 2012 group stage with a 13-1 record, losing only to another Chinese team, Ehome. They will later get the ages after climbing up all the way from the loser's bracket. After his not-so-good stint at the International 2014, Chinese fans all over the scene was shocked at YYF's retirement announcement. You don't want to play against him in the lane unless you want to get showered and pierced by arrows of the signature offlane Wind Ranger. YYF is currently inactive and teamless. Number 8. Dimitri Light of Heaven Koprienov Light of Heaven, or LOH for short, was another member of the legendary Navi squad who got the very first Aegis at the first international. LOH is quite unique as a Dota player as he can play any positions at a high level. He started as a boss 5 support for Navi but later switched to the offlane position. He retired after they won Star Ladder Star Series Season 4. Up to this day, LOH is considered one of the best offlane players and is remembered for his clutch BKB black hole counter against IG on the quarterfinals of the first international. Currently, LOH is part of the Russian Dota 2 broadcasting team as a caster. Number 7. Zhang Mu Pan Mu was part of the 2014 newbie squad who won the grand prize in the international of the same year. Mostly played as a mid laner, Mu proved himself to be one of the skilled Chinese players of his time with a high risk, high reward playstyle at the mid lane. He started his career as one of the members of Tong Fu side by side with another Chinese powerhouse player, Hao. Together, they got 4th place at the 3rd International. In 2013, Tong Fu has disbanded and got reunited again after several months with three of his teammates and Xiao Eight to form what then was a Chinese dream team under Newbie's banner who will later get the TI4 Aegis. Mu would later get his first setback at the 2015 DAC and his career goes downhill from there on. He then announced his retirement on August 4, 2016. Mu was inactive since then but rumors are he is hinting to be one of the casters in the Chinese scene. Number 6. Sebastian Effenmad Debs Sorry guys, it just can't say it. Effenmad or Mad for short is a French support player who ended his playing career under Team Kaipi. Mad's skills as a support player was exceptional although his record does not show it. In the span of 4 years, he switched several teams and only attended the international once in the first 4 years of his playing time wherein they placed dead last on. Later in his career, he played with Alliance alongside Loda, Ake, and Admiral Bulldog. 
they placed fourth in both Dream League and joined Dota MLG Pro League Season 2. Their good stint was short-lived after they fell early in the ESL1 Frankfurt 2015. Currently stands as the coach of the four-time major champion OG and presented them with amazing results. Also, we saw some glimpse of his current buy consistency placing in the upper part of the European MMR leaderboards. Perhaps his not-so-good run during his playing days is a good reason to go back to being pro and redeem himself. Number 5. Bai ROTK Fan One of the well-known captains of the Chinese scene, ROTK had a very good resume under his belt. He started playing on the offlane position under the legendary banner of Team DK. Alongside Burning, they finished 5th to 6th at the International 2013. He later was recruited by VG Gaming as a captain and lead the team to a second place finish at the International 2014. After their successful run, he decided to retire from the scene. His retirement was short-lived and later came back and played for Big God, Ehome, LGD, and VGJ respectively until he decided to act as the coach for his team, VGJ. Given his leadership skills and a good finish on his playing time with VGJ, Fans of ROTK would love to see him play again and lead the Chinese team to another series of victories. Number 4. Alexander Habos Daskevich Habos is a part of the legendary Navi squad that won the International 2011. Playing the carry role for Navi, Habos was one of the best at his time. He is known for a fast farmer and a player who synergizes well with his team. He attended the International 2011 to 2014 and played for the Grand Finals in three out of the four International they attended. He then decided to retire from the scene by the start of 2016 after Navi entered a slump in their career. He is currently acting as the head coach of Navi. He said in an interview that he badly wants to play at the pro scene again. Hopefully, Habos and the old Navi team would have one last run. What do you think? Number 3. Chan Winter Lit Bin The only person who attended every TI either as a player or an analyst, Winter was once a renowned Dota player. He played for the Southeast Asian powerhouse teams Orange Esports alongside Yamate and MUFC. He was a very good strategist which he acquired by playing chess in the competitive level as a kid. Winter's resume is an impressive one. During his playing time, their team placed mediocre to great. After failing to join TI4 with Orange Esports, he was immediately invited to be an analyst. Although he played a short time after being an analyst for TI4, he decided to stay behind the scenes and work as an analyst with Beyond the Summit. In 2016, he decided to play with Mineski X, but it was not too long that they came back to the broadcasting team. Number 2. Chen Hao Ji Hao General Hao, as known in the Chinese scene, is one of the most exciting carry players to watch in Dota because of his high-risk, high-reward playstyle. His aggressiveness makes sure that their match would have no lack of action and will keep your blood pumping while watching. You will see this player continuously diving head-on for kills even if he is outnumbered. Hao played for powerhouse Chinese teams like Nirvana, Cn, Songfu, Invictus Gaming, Newbie, and BG Gaming. He is also an Aegis holder which he got under Newbie when they won the International 2014. Fans love the thrill when watching Hao and will surely want to see more of his flashy gameplay. Before we go with our number one player who we wish should have a comeback, let's first have honorable mentions. The list includes X Cloud9 turned streamer Sing Sing, CIS explosive player Vigos, and the playmaker or TI2 champion Carrie Zhou. Number one. Henrik Admiral Bulldog Anberg The father of the rat Dota, Admiral Bulldog is a famous known Dota player until nowadays. He only played for one team which is Alliance even since the No Tidehunter days. He was part of the Alliance squad that claimed the Aegis at the International 2013 after winning a gut-clenching series against the rival Na'Vi. He was first criticized by having a very few hero pool due to the fact that he mostly plays Lone Druid, Nature's Prophet, Bounty Hunter, or Clockwork. Though he silenced his critics after the TI3 Grand Finals where he used the rap gameplay with his signature hero, Nature's Prophet. That perhaps was one of the best moments of the Dota Pro scene. Currently, he is streaming games at Twitch. Admiral Bulldog has a big fan base and hopes to see him play once more and see the original rap Dota. That's our list for the top 10 who we think should still make a one big competitive push. 
We might or might not miss someone, so let us know on the comment section. Who knows? We might have a second part with your suggestions on it. Also, we would like to develop and grow this kind of content, so be sure to support us by subscribing, liking, and sharing our videos. Lastly, let us also know what you want us to discuss on our next videos. Till then, see ya!